Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, guten Tag, everybody. Uh, yeah, I had to push the button right here on my, on my wireless microphone. I'm very sorry. I hope you can hear me now. Can't hear? Works better, better, better. Now it works. Cool. So, I'm very sorry for that. But, um, yeah, what I just said, Guten Abend, everyone. I'm very happy to have you here. Uh, I haven't been streaming for three months, I guess. And this package was also sitting um, right here in my corner for the last three months. And I just didn't manage uh, to, to start a live stream. So today is the day that we start unboxing the Artillery Hornet. And um, yeah, as you might have already read in the uh, video title, um, I guess, um, I try to not spoil myself, but I guess this is again just just another Endor 3 clone. But um, as Artillery also did it with their um, X1, um, I guess this has a little twist. So uh, this was also the reason why I uh, told Artillery that I would be happy to take a look at it. Um, so I think let's crack this thing open and see what's inside and see if we can get it working. Cool. So, the uh, probably m most dangerous tool in the workshop. Yes. Hey Robin, thanks for joining. Cool. So, who would have thought, but uh, yeah. Greeted with the typical black foam. If you guys don't know and haven't watched my video, um, if your printer is a little loud or you have the feeling that it's a little loud and you still have that packing foam around, put that on the table, put a, um, like a concrete paver on it and then your printer and uh, this will make a huge difference in the end. <laughs> ID is saying, a most dangerous tool in the workshop is an A8A8. Yes, um, but I don't have one of those. So for me, most dangerous uh, tool in the shop is probably my utility knife. Cool. So what do we have in here? So as I already said before, I, I think this printer has a bit of a twist and artillery has been pretty good in not just like 100% cloning um, well, in the earlier days, the CR10 and uh, nowadays the, the Ender 3. So we have a really nice injection molded. Um, yeah, I guess that's the spool holder in here. And what else do we have? We have a small like purse thing with, um, let me also, Turn on the other camera so that you can have also a closer look on the inside. Yeah, there we go. So we have, this seems to be um, a SD card reader. There's an SD card, there are spare rollers, which is kind of nice because um, after a while, some of them might uh, wear out or the bearings just might wear out. There is one nozzle, yeah, there's one replacement nozzle, which is really nice um, if that one gets clocked up. Cool, um, yeah, what else do we have? Like the usual spanners and a couple of, um, of screws in here. Then we have a USB cable. Then another spanner, which doesn't, which doesn't look um, as as generic as the the stamped ones, like just the sheet metal stamped ones um, that I well tend to know from from other kids. All right, so what else do we have? And yeah, maybe this well not not maybe, but this is the thing that that is twisted. If you know the artillery sidewinder. X1 
you know that this was different to a CR10, um, that it did the wire routing a little bit different because it used the flat flex cables and that resulted in a really neat look in the end. And what Artillery, I think, did right here was um, they replaced the wire harness that usually goes to the hot end with this integrated, I don't know, um, aviation plug thing where you have the connectors for your thermistor, uh, for your fan probably, for uh, your hot end. And you also have an integrated uh, you also have an integrated Bowden tube in here, which is pretty cool. The only thing where I'm really afraid is if this thing, well, wears out over time. I don't know if you can get a replacement harness, but um, if maybe somebody knows, yeah, yeah, put it in the comments. All right, uh, what else do we have? We have... A, at least on the outside, color manual. Can you focus? Yeah, color manual. So um, we will follow that in a short bit. Then we have a quality control checklist. <laughs> Then, yeah, just another piece of foam. So, yeah, put that in the corner. And then we have, well, the gantry of the printer. So, let's get this out of here. Uh, Robin is asking, can you swap the Bowden tube? I am not sure. Um, I don't think that you can easily swap it. So just, so just pulling on it doesn't seem to get it loose. I think this is really an integrated solution and I am not sure if uh, there's a replacement solution for that. Um, I... To be totally honest, I rarely had to exchange Bowden tubes. Um, so I think this is not really a, a deal breaker, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, is there a rotation lock at the end? Yeah, this is, this is kind of an aviation plug thing or how they call it. Let's see. Yeah, so. This is, yeah, for fixing it in place. That's pretty cool. All right. So let's get the gantry out. Is that still stuck in here? No. Okay. So there is the gantry. We have a single lead screw. Um, for the z-axis on one side there is an anti wobble feature in here let me just change the camera angle a little that you can get a closer look on that there we go so So we have the Z lead screw motor right here. Uh, we have a coupler to the lead screw and there is the anti-wobbling feature which allows um, basically the nut to wobble around in this bearing right here. Um, so a Z wobble shouldn't show on the parts itself. Then we have a button extruder right here um it looks very similar to an e3d titan so it's probably just just another titan clone um let me see if this one is nah it's 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 not uh one that drives the filament from both sides so uh yeah just 
uh, you just have like a hop gear in here and on the other side there's just an idler. On this side you, we can see the, um, the connector um, where also the Bowden tube gets right in. Cool. Um, yeah, and then the typical stuff, end stop. And do we have something? Yeah, this is also pretty neat. Uh, we also have a nut right here on that side to um, tighten the belt. Cool. Um, I'll put that down and I'll just pick it up in a second. So what else do we have? Well, just the typical power plug. Kaltgeräte Stecker, as we say in German. And there is the hot end. And that's also pretty neat because I honestly kind of hate these sheet metal bent hot ends, uh, hot end covers. They look horrible, they're heavy and I don't know, they're not good for airflow and, and stuff like that. So what we have right here, this is injection molded and looks pretty cool. And I think through the yellow color and also the edges that we have around here, this should resemble our, our Hornet that is, uh, that is giving the name for the printer. Um, Mika is asking, wie viel kostet der? How much is the printer costing? I'm not 100% sure. You can check the link in the description. I think it's around 250 bucks. Um, and I think they have it in stock in the US and also in Europe. So you don't have to worry about, about import taxes. Um, what else do we have in here? Let me see that. So we have like a connector PCB in here. Um, this connector PCB connects the, which is also pretty cool, the two uh, part cooling fans that we have on the left and the right side. Those are just the, the typical 40 millimeter blower fans. Um, the hot end and the thermistor are also just connected by plugs. So it's uh, yeah, way easier to swap them out uh, because on other machines you uh, basically need to reroute all of the wires. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, hot end, just the typical E3D style one. And what is also different to the usual Ender 3 clones is the size of like the cold side of the hot end. So the um, the not heater, uh, the cooling block, it's, it's pretty short. It's pretty short. It's like half of the length um, I, I used to have. So yeah, kind of nice. Um, this is, I think, just a 30 millimeter fan in the front. So I expected that one to be pretty whiny, but we will see, we will see. Um, yeah, no volcano hot end in here. I think that's, that's not, um, that's not the aim of this printer um, to print like high volumes of material. Um, hey, Uncle Chelsea. Nice to have you here. Um, it's basically just um, a, a beginner printer. It's like a different style Ender 3. Um, pretty cheap to buy, but hopefully capable. As I said, I tried to not spoil myself um, and for this reason I don't really know how this machine performs. So yeah, hot end. I talk too much. All right. So um, let me get the rest of the packing form out of here. Picro is asking what about the CR30 review. Uh, to be totally honest, I, I still have it down in my office. Uh, I have been using it from time to time, but I... <laughs> maybe, maybe you can tell me more on that. Uh, I don't know if the Kickstarter units have already been shipped and I know that I don't have like the latest build standard and if I will be doing a review of the belt printer, I basically need to have 
the one that's also um, shipping to the ones that will buy it in the future. Because uh, what is pretty challenging on the CL30 is, is the belt. And I know that Naomi has been tweaking it a little bit, that it's uh, more sticky and you don't have the, um, you don't have, you don't need to fear anymore that your prints come loose very easily. But yeah, more in that probably in a, in a different video or we can talk about that once we get this thing printing in here. All right, and the next thing or actually the last thing, that's the base. And this is also kind of different because all of the yellow parts are injection molded, which is, looks pretty cool. Looks really nice to be honest. Um, just because, yeah, it's, it's a different look to the typical Endo 3 clones. Injection mold itself looks really nice, kind of a matte finish on the outside. Um, I guess I'll crack it open in a second that we can maybe take a little bit of a closer look on the electronics. But otherwise, yeah, looks cool, looks different. Um, let me get you a close up. So. Yeah, so this is all injection molded, the yellow stuff. We have an encoder here in the front. This is, I think, probably just a typical um, dot matrix display. We have a full size SD card slot here in the front. Um, the first thing I notice is that in the bracket right here in the front is a little bit crooked, but I don't know if that's, that's by design or if that's gonna hurt anything. Yeah. Bed doesn't seem to be wobbly. So uh, I guess I'll put it on the desk and put the big box away. Smaller LCD than most clones. Yeah, but I don't really mind. Um, so the thing is some of the newer models, they have the, the fancy color screens, but to be totally honest, if those color screens or touch screens are not really responsive and not working well, I just rather prefer having one of those typical dot matrix LCD displays because we know that they are working and they usually use um, just like the, the stock Marlin firmware. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look at the manual and get the thing going. Ah. Or maybe before we get that thing going, let's, let's maybe just take a quick look on the inside because I would be really interested uh, to see how the, the electronics look like. Uh, let me see how I can get this thing open. Um, So we have one big um, PSU in here. This is a 24 volt, uh, just uh, one of those typical 350 watt ones that you find in, in basically any printer nowadays. Uh, it doesn't look, yeah, it's, it's not, it's of course not a mean well power supply, but yeah. Um, I don't know with my, CR6SE, I had real issues with the Meanwell power supply. It was really noisy. So I don't know if other power supplies are designed well, uh, they can work kind of in a similar way. Okay, let's see if I can get that open. So I just removed the th three, three screws right here on the bottom. Um, I fear that there are additional ones below, below those feet. So the first ones are already asking, will I mod it? Um, I don't know if it works. Why mod a printer that works? This is always what I'm saying. Um, ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
you don't need to see me. Okay, so we have an artillery ruby board in here, version 1.1. We have an ARM STM32 F401 in here. So a 32 uh, bit um, controller, which is nice, but probably not really necessary. It would be interesting to know what's, what stepper motor drivers they're using. I hope those are also silent ones and not the old uh, typical Allegro uh, 4988, uh, but we will definitely see that in a short while. There is a lot of hot slots over, over the connectors, um, which is a pain if you would like to disassemble it, but on the other side, I think it's pretty cool uh, that they just secured everything in place, that it doesn't get loose. Uh, during shipping, uh, we have a fan right here in the back. Um, the, the mains wires that we can see back here, um, they are nicely isolated. There's a cover over the mains the main, mains connectors on the, um, on the PSU. We have a grounding wire connected. These are all crimped. So I can't really complain that much. Um, what is also pretty nice, so uh, I guess they weren't really able to put um, the, the control board at some place right here in the housing where you could directly uh, plug in a USB cable. So they have basically this USB cable, um, how do you say, not elongation, but uh, this is an additional USB cable which, which goes to, to another socket that is, that is here on the side. So if you ever need to connect that printer to Octoprint or you need to flash a new firmware, you can use that. Uh, yeah, then just the typical flat flex cables that go right here to the front to the LCD board. Um, otherwise, not really that much more to say. Um, and I also can't really complain. Um, it doesn't look bad on first sight. It's really interesting that um, that basically the rails and also the motors directly connect to the injection mold. Um, so that needs to be at least fairly precise uh, in manufacturing and also fairly stiff because um, yeah, this side right here is connected to the belt of the, of the Y axis. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how it holds up. Sans says it does make it easy to hide um, an Octopi Raspberry Pi on the inside. Yes, it does because the cool thing about this being a plastics cover is uh, that it doesn't, for example, shield your um, your vi your Wi-Fi signal. I can already see one bodge. <laughs> Let me show that for a second. So um, I guess they kind of forgot to have a small, come on, cutout uh, for the flat flex cable. So this has been done as an afterthought and not in the injection mold itself. Um, Alyssa is asking, is there glue on the heat sinks? Um, it looks like there are some, some reddit residues of thermal compounds. Come on, focus. There are some residues of the, like the thermal glue they used to glue the heat sinks in place uh, right here on the top. Nothing I be worried about. So, 
let's close this again. Ow. So yeah, make sure that you don't have your hand or parts of your skin um, anywhere near where it closes. All right, so good so far. So let's turn this over. And uh, yeah, I think now it's finally the time to take a look at the manual. Secondary. So yeah, those are the contents of the package. And step number one, assembly. Align the XY gantry to the notch on the base, then fix the gantry to the base with the four pieces of M5 by 25 pre-installed on the base. Okay. Um, let's see how we do that. Yeah, I'll put it on the side. This is a four millimeter. Yeah. Jerome says, do the screen peel. Yeah, we will do that once, once we power the machine on. Um, I, th I think it's too early, too early for the screen peel. Okay, let's at first line one ball of each side. Yeah, ID is saying Vera. Oh, I love them. Um, having some like tools that at least cost a little makes uh, working sometimes so much more enjoyable. And one of the things that I really like to use basically every day are my trusty Vera spanners that I inherited from my grandpa. Andrew is saying they don't sell any replacement cables uh, Bowden on their website despite this despite this despite this being released for ages. So yeah, if if you have issues with this connector right here, um, I don't know. I think in the end you could still just solder something together, but I guess this is one of the outstanding features of the machine. So it's. Not that great that they don't that they don't sell any any spares. Okay. I have already read quite a lot of Voron comments. Yeah, I will do more actually. There are currently some parts of the Voron being printed downstairs. Um all right, let's take a look at the manual. What is step number two? Step number two is slide the spool holder into the groove on the base as shown in the picture and press it down to fix it in place. So where does it go? It goes on the right side. Yeah. Let me change the camera so the spool holder goes right here on the side 
yeah a bit wiggly but i think i think that's all right cool um so we finished that step Let's let's get to step number three connect the z end stop cable uh and i think did i screw up Yes, can I, did I screw up? This is, is this the front? Yeah, it should be the front. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay. So. Let's turn that around. Ah, just. Um, sorry. need to make that a little brighter okay so z axis end stop <sighs> next step connect the c stepper motor and finally connect the main cable so all of that right here um they the cables aren't color coded, but you can't really mix them up because they have uh, like different pin headers. And the last one is the main cable. Ah, this one. Okay. So this is the main cable. Can you see that? No, it's too bright. Sorry, uh, this is the main cable um, that goes right here in the back. Cool. So um, let me think. I still have I still have the the zip ties connecting everything. I don't know if that's the manual to remove them. Uh, no, it's not. And I'm asking myself one of the things I'm missing. I think this is one of the, this is actually the first printer that doesn't come with one of these with one of those flush cutters. Um, I won't say that I I don't have enough of those flush cutters. But uh, yeah, I need to remove them. Let's see if we can also do that. Oh yeah, that's all right. Just, just try to not cut myself. Okay. Jerome is asking any thoughts on the sturdiness. Oh yeah, my, my, my whole desk is shaking currently. So um, thoughts on the sturdiness. So the gantry, so the uh, XZ gantry is again fixed on, on extrusions down here. And yeah, that looks super rigid. I wouldn't be worried, worried about anything. So that seems to be all right. Okay. I think now we get to the interesting part and this is um, connecting the hot end and the, um, I don't know, really cool looking, um, like connecting cable, which, which makes in the end a really like clean, clean build. Okay, um, next step is to install the hot end on the carriage using the M3 screws that we previously found here in uh, the back of spanners. Um, Sund is asking, what's the spacing between the PSU and the table? Is there enough inlet when it's facing down? So we have, I would say five millimeters of spacing between the PSU and the table. Um, so it should be enough 
uh, that it gets a bit of air. But I think we'll see that once, once it's going, how loud it really is. Okay, one, two, three. Polymate is asking, how's the baby doing? The baby is doing fine. I, I hope the baby is uh, already sleeping downstairs. Um, since I can't hear her crying, uh, she, she should be fine at the moment. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Okay, um, this is, I think, a two millimeter. Two millimeter. So that's screwed in from the front. There are threaded inserts in the in the sheet metal parts. Chandra is asking, does it cost the same as uh, the Sidewinder? I think it is less expensive than, than the Sidewinder. I, I would suspect um, the Sidewinder at least used to be around $400. And this one is, I think, 250 so this competes more with like the end of three pro or the end of three version two instead of yeah the bigger version also the like the build volume is the same as as an end of three i think it's like 220 by 220 by looks like 300. three partners saying 297 on amazon the x1 or the the hornet if you're paying 240 bucks for, for an artillery Signwinder X1, uh, this would be a pretty cool deal. Because, yeah, I still like to use the X1. And it has a bigger... Um, and it has a bigger uh, build volume the x1 but yeah the x1 is already i think two years old so there has been a bit of of overhaul and development um okay 3d partners saying the hornet is uh 240 bucks yeah so as i said it's competing more with the end of three and all of the derivatives yeah so that's in place Oh, I, I actually forgot to say, and that might be interesting for some, this manual is not only in English, but also in Deutsch. Lese mich zuerst. Um, yeah, so for all my German viewers out there, this manual is also in German. I don't know if, you, if you're buying a, a different version, if there's also a Spanish version um, or something like that, but German manual, kudos for that. <clears throat> Good. Um, the next thing is connect the extruder cable, tighten down the cable and turning it by the locking mechanism. This seems to be, so now we need to connect this connection cable. Um, this l seems to be pretty symmetric, so I don't think that there is that we need to put one side specifically into one and uh, another one on the other side. So focus. Okay, so this is really cool. So you put that in here and then just screw it down. It also, um, so be before I maybe put that in here, it also looks as if that Bowden tube doesn't go all the way down to the nozzle as it is for example for an endo 3 and then that would be bad because um, the increased amount of heat 
would wear down the Bowden tube like very quickly and that would require changing it. But since this looks as if the Bowden tube still is in the, I would say, more or less uh, a cold area, um, you shouldn't have any problems that the, that the end right here uh, wears. Uh, seriously? Ah, oh, damn it. I will be back in one second. Uh, I think I'm back. I think I'm back. I think I'm back. <sighs> uh, Daniel, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, get yourself a pizza. I would also have a pizza. I'm sorry. I should have checked uh, the batteries in the transmitter before I started. <clears throat> cool. Uh, so we connected that and the last step is to tension the eccentric nuts with the supplied spanner. So I will just check if any of them are loose but they seem to be pretty tight. So there is no need to, to re-tighten them. I think it would just make things worse. Yeah and also below the bed nothing is Nothing is wobbling around. Okay. Leveling the build plate. Okay. So that means that we are finished with the build. If I would not have talked that much, uh, this would have been like a five minute job. Um, people were asking for the peel. And I will peel that as soon as I, I think I connected the power. Give me one second. I kind of fear that uh, the protective cover on the screen is below the, um, the injection mold. So I hope that we can Get that loose. Um, I checked the PSU before it is set to 230 volts so good for here in Germany so yeah let's turn it on all right so sorry this looks like the standard Marlin screen and I don't feel bad about that because it just works. Uh, yeah, let's, let's peel the protective cover. Oh yeah, that works. So, I'm sorry. Nice. No magic smoke coming from somewhere. I don't know if you're currently able to hear the machine, but 
I have like a an okay humming sound coming from um, I think the PSU. It's not totally quiet. Um, I'm usually the guy that likes really quiet printers, but yeah, it's it's not completely quiet, but it's still bearable. Seriously, did they did they forget a letter? Artillery Hornet Ready. Well, they they didn't forget it technically. It's uh, just the screen wasn't like big enough. Okay, um, so let's also remove the protective sheet from the build platform. So yeah, this is the typical, I don't know, ceramics coated glass print bed, which works really, really well with PLA and just from my experience too well, because sometimes you can't really get parts to unstick from there. So I'm not the greatest fan of those. It's not removable. It's directly glued to the, um, like the heater PCB. So let me just remove those quality control pass stickers. Okay. So, um, I, yeah, the next thing we need to do is to level the bed. So let's preheat it. Um, temperature, preheat PLA, preheat PLA. <laughs> so they have 70 degrees for the bed for PLA, which is um, quite high to be honest, because yeah, with this ultra base, usually 70, um, 50 to 60 degrees is sufficient. Um, one thing that is nice, and unfortunately you haven't seen that, but um, this fan right here in the front is temperature controlled. So it wasn't on until we, um, we reached, I think, 50 or 70 degrees on the hot end, which is nice. And I think it is one of the first of those kind of Ender-like or CR10-like printers where that hot end fan is not annoyingly loud. That is really quiet. Maybe, yeah, it's just a really, really quiet hissing noise. Um, the PSU is way louder. So, heat up also seems to be pretty fast. So, uh, the hot end is already at uh, 208 degrees. It overshoot a bit. The bed, it is at uh, 50 degrees. So let's clean up the desk a little before we continue. Um, well, yeah, it is, it is quiet. It's, it's not totally quiet. I hope that they have silent stepper motor drivers in here, uh, which could make it really a really nice office printer. Okay, what are they telling us? Uh, select temperature, preheat PLA, preheat PLA. This will heat up the bed and the nozzle to actual printing conditions, make the leveling more accurate. Wait for one minute after the machine reached the target temperature. Select motion, level corners. Cool. Okay, so we are at 66 degrees on the bed. Yeah, I'm impatient. So let's get to motion. Battle leveling. Let's change that a bit. Ah. Bed leveling. Level corners. So we are homing. 
Oh, it's nice and quiet. Can you hear it? It's really quiet. That's nice. Okay, first corner. So uh, yeah, what I usually take is just a piece of paper and then we turn the knob until we hear a bit of friction uh, or yeah, notice a bit of friction. That's all right. Oh, I really enjoy that they that they have enabled the bad leveling assistant because it's such such a simple but such a good feature and i'm always wondering why companies just don't activate that in their firmware okay okay and the bed seems to be kind of level because also the point in the middle seems to be fine Okay, good. So we are done. Let's see what's next on the list. Okay, I guess we're done. So um, let's check if there is some pre-made G-code on the SD card um, and otherwise we'll just slice something and get this thing printing. So far I'm at least not upset about that machine. Uh, Robin is asking how well is the bed glued to the heater PCB? I can say that it is it is glued. It's also really nice to see that um, I think similar to the um, Artillery Sidewinder X1, there is a bit of insulation below the bed, which also helps with uh, heat up temperatures. Are the corners glued down? I have no clue. I would, I would hope that um, the whole piece of glass is, is glued to the aluminum carrier. Okay. Um, and as I said before, we have a full size SD card, so no fiddling around with the small ones. No USB though, um, but I don't really mind uh, using SD card. Uh, change media print from media there is a cube g code hornet configuration um, since i don't know what cube actually means i think we'll just slice something um, i think we'll just slice something and, and get that printing um, andreas thaler is complaining that i that I uh, didn't measure the angles and the distances. Um, I totally, honestly, rarely do that. And my prints also turn out fine. I think this is <laughs> too German. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that will be the calibration cube. Um, le let's slice something more interesting, I guess. Um, and I think that will also be be done in a second. Let's see if I can give you a look on my screen. There we go. So um, maybe for your information, um, artillery they are they seem to have a Cura profile. Um, on their SD card and that is what they recommend since I'm just a fan of, of Prusa Slicer and the configuration. Um, we will slice something in Prusa Slicer. Um, where did I put the SD card? There we go. Oh, 
Okay. So let's open Prusa Slicer. Um, I think there is no pre-configured profile for the artillery, not Sidewinder, the artillery Hornet in Prusa Slicer. So we can check the configuration wizard. So other vendors, it's FL Sun, Bebo, Trilab, Little Spot, Anycubic. Uh, but I'll just grab the end of three profile. That's in 99% of the cases, totally, totally sufficient. So let's select um, the Marvin, maybe scale that down to 100, uh, scale that up to 150%, just that it takes a bit more time to print yeah benchy will be good but a benchy always takes like two and a half hours and uh, that's that's too long for me at the moment so this is one hour ten minutes yeah we don't need 20 percent infill let's just change that to uh five percent infill so we are right at one hour and three minutes so save that to the sd card Eject the SD card and get that thing going again. Um, for some, this screen and also the menu might look antiquated, but as I said, this is basically stock Marlin and it just works. I am way more happy to use that instead of I guess 95% of, of other solutions that are out there. Uh, before we start, we also need to make sure that we load some filament. And let me get the big camera again. Um, I, I said in the video title, this is a printer with a twist. Um, the twist, I mean, is we have all of the injection molded parts, which do look honestly really nice and are just something different in comparison to all of the other hundreds of Ender 3 clones. Um, we have dual cooling but I think the I think the best thing about this machine is the really clean wiring between the the feeder and the hot end and that's just something I need I need to put out there. Um, Andreas is asking, is there USB input for Octoprint? Yes, there is. You can see it right here. So there is, I think that's, um, yeah, the bigger USB thingy. Okay. Um, and what's also different to like basically every other printer that I have unboxed over the years, this one doesn't come with any um, with any snippers and there is no sample filament um, delivered with the machine which I find great because sample filament is always horrible. So I just grab a roll of Das Filament Multicolor Galaxy PLA. Let's put that on the spool holder and see how we can feed it in there. Antti is asking, Stefan, do you have any recommendations of a touchscreen for Marlin that is not horrible? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I really like the simple dot matrix screens because they are just working. Okay. Um, let's move the Z axis a bit up. Oh, and look how fast the z-axis is moving. It, this is kind of similar to the artillery X1, to be totally honest, because most other knockoff printers, there wasn't really put any thought into the machines. And with both of the artillery machines that I have so far, it seems that somebody who is regularly printing have 
has been tweaking the firmware and also the machine itself. And those are just the small little things. Wiring is clean. The Z-axis is not horribly slow when it's moving up and downwards. <clears throat> so, as I said, so far, pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of, of filament loading procedures. Uh, there's a really nice... Let me show that. There's a really nice hook right here at, at the feeder uh, that you can just uh, yeah, pull back and then feed the filament manually. That's way faster. Cool. So, let's get printing. Um, Joes is asking, do I get this or the CR6SE? Uh, can tell that because so far I, I haven't used this printer so far. I wasn't really keen on the CR6SE, but I think they changed a couple of things after the Kickstarter ended. Um, and the CR6SE is pretty expensive. And I guess the only really nice thing about the CR6SE is the integrated nozzle bed leveling sensor. Okay, so let's go to print from media. Yeah, print from media and this is our keychain Marlin. And let's start it. Yeah, CR6 and it has a dual leads, dual Z leads group. But also honestly, if a printer is well designed, you don't need two Z axes. Uh, it's it's really reliable this way as well. So basically the only thing I'm missing right here is, is a dual um, a dual gear feeder. So this is just a, a single sided feeder similar as on the um, X1. But if you're not printing crazy fast, this should also do the job. Michael is saying ugliest printer I've ever seen. Honestly, I think this is one of the be more beautiful ones. So we are priming. Um, bed level also looks okay. Yep, that's fine. Um, sorry for the shaking. I should have maybe switched cameras before I did that. Okay, we can see a lot at the moment. Yeah, looks good. Looks good to me. Auntie is saying Lamborghini colors. Yeah, as I said, the, the color scheme is, is really nice. Um, it's printing now. Print moves, part cooling fans, uh, hot end cooling fan, and yeah, like the stepper motors, totally quiet. The only thing that is mm, slightly annoying, I'd say, is the loud PSU, but it could be worse. It could be really worse. Fernando, thank you for the 50, is that Mexican dollars? Uh, 
Thank you so much for uh, that donation. Uh, yesterday arrived my Artillery Genius with issues with the touchscreen. Therefore, I prefer the simple LCD screen with knob. Greetings from Mexico. Uh, greetings from Germany to Mexico. Mr. Max Real is asking, how fast are you printing? Uh, this is the standard slicing profile from Punsha Slicer for the Ender 3. Um, it is quite conservative. I think it does like 40 to 50 millimeters a second. Um, Sund is asking, did the Bowden PTF, PTFE move freely inside the cable or can it be replaced without uh, the entire cable harness? I think it's not movable and this might be one of the bigger downsides. I'll try to give you a better perspective that you can also see the print going. Yeah, sorry. So we're currently printing the feet of the Marvin. It is a bit small. Yeah, we will see more of it, more of it in a second. As soon as we get further up. Yeah, the the hot end, the hot end assembly is is a bit big, but yeah, the dual, the dual cooling fans do look really nice. Um, <clears throat> Blanksy is asking, is there an estimated print time? Um, Prusa Slicer estimated roughly one hour and the screen just gives us an elapsed time. Soviet and Scotsman is saying interesting concept, but non-replaceable Bowden is weird. Yes, it is weird, but the good thing is that this Bowden tube right here doesn't go all the way down to the nozzle, so it's not in the hot zone. So it shouldn't really wear out if you're not printing tons and tons of carbon fiber reinforced materials. But if this is your plan, you should maybe also take a look at a different printer. Hans Kanz is saying, I heard this thing can print pretty fast. Um, we can turn up the um, printing speed in a bit, also go to 200% and see um, what happens then. Joe's is saying, uh, from first impression, what would you print to modify the printer right now uh, nothing um, it looks fine it looks really fine um, I don't see the need for a different fan shroud so far um, we have we have the possibility to tighten the X belt right here and the Z belt the Z belt, uh, sorry, the um, the Y belt. Uh, the Y belt is not that easily tightenable. Um, yeah, so far so good. Um, it looks it looks pretty nice. One of those machines again. I I think I might not directly put uh, somewhere on a shelf and and not use anymore. Um, the interesting thing to me is, and maybe somebody of you can answer that, but I haven't read or seen a lot of um, reviews of that machine. Is there something really like game breaking or wasn't it just covered that much yet? Because as I said, I have that machine. I have had that machine in my corner for three months. So I'm probably not the only one that has that one. And I think Joel also streamed one or two weeks ago um, assembling that machine. But I 
didn't want to, to, to spoil myself. So I wanted to go into that uh, live stream unboxing review um, without any pre-thoughts. Uh, Daniel is saying maybe you can tighten the Y belt with the stepper. Uh, no, the stepper is actually um, like fixed in position. There is the bracket here in the front that you can modify. This one right here. Um, there are slots in this bracket right here, so you can um, open those and just put it in place. But there's not like a nice mechanism as for the x-axis um, to adjust the tightness. Uh, Anthony is asking, would you, be, would you change anything? The only thing I would change if I was like artillery, but yeah, they built that to a price is a less noisy power supply because if the power supply would be more quiet or even fanless this would be a quiet machine it would be as quiet as as a prusa and this is still something i'm i'm really looking for a forward uh, or looking for besides the prusa every other printer is noisy in some way some might not be bothered by that but it always annoys me and i can understand why Others are not, not able to do that. Anti, uh, thank you for the 25... Thank you for the $25. Uh, greetings from Texas. Keep making great content. Uh, I challenge other US viewers to spread some love as well. Uh, thank you very much, Anti. Highly appreciate that. Uh, greetings to Texas as well. Still one state I, I haven't visited yet. Um, si since we are currently in the, yeah, let's, let's take a look how the, the print turns out mode. Um, my big plan for this year pre-COVID was uh, that I'll just take two or three months of work uh, due to parental leave, what we can do in Germany and do one big uh, yeah, US, um, I don't know, how do you, how do you say that? Uh, one big US tour. So I was really planning to rent an RV in Maine or just on the Upper East Coast, then drive all the way down the East Coast to Florida, then over to the West Coast and all the way up to Seattle, Vancouver. Uh, this is still one of my big dreams, but unfortunately, Due to uh, COVID, that's that's not gonna happen. Um, I still have I still have a couple of weeks, or actually two months of parental leave this August and September, um, and we have already rented an RV for that time. But I fear, yeah, it's called a road trip. But I fear that this road trip might also only happen in in, in Germany. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, John is asking, what are you drinking? Uh, that is one horribly good uh, Italian, like, um, um, Mandarin lemonade thing, San Pellegrino Clementina. Really nice. Always reminds me of always reminds me of uh, holidays in Italy <laughs> and the great food there. Eric, thanks for the five bucks. Highly appreciate that. Uh, do you think this would work with the Quinley bed from 3DQ? I have no clue what the Quinley bed is, but uh, due to the super chat, uh, let me just check that one second and maybe I can give you an answer so um,
Okay. So, uh, yeah, I don't have any possibility to change the screen at the moment, but it looks like as if the Quinley bed is, well, you, I guess you basically put the printer at an angle and have a decode that ejects the parts one after the other. Um, I don't see why this shouldn't be working. Um, there are There is the SD card and the knob right here in the front. Uh, but if you would put a cover over that, why not? Why not? Um, yes, I still need to open my beverage. I've been playing around with it in, in my hand for the last 10 minutes. Daniel Nestle, unfortunately, seriously? Is that Nestle? It doesn't say Nestle on it doesn't say Nestle on, on the can, it says ball. But yeah, maybe they they didn't put their name on it. Um Nicholas is asking, does the bed seem to be evenly heated because the X1 is bad in that regard? Um, I don't know and I can't... Oh. Give me one second. I have a thermal camera. Right over here. Um, one thing I think we haven't talked about yet, um, I think this not, is not an AC heated bed, this is a DC bed running on 24 volts. So heat up times are not as quick, but still I think really manageable. So I have a FLIR thermal camera that I can put on my phone and then we can take a look if um, the bed is heated evenly. So let's see. Wait a second. So... I don't know if this is due to the cooling fans, but yeah, there's 50 right here or if it's just due to the emissivity of the bed, but there seems to be quite quite a hot spot on that side. Um, it's hard to say, as I say, as I said, um, it always depends on the emissivity of the material, um, but it doesn't look to be like super evenly. We have 50 right here. This is just the reflection of the hot end and this looks really weird. There's a really a real hot spot on that side. Yeah, maybe something to check out if I would ever do a review. Uh, she is saying probably not the most accurate reading being a phone attachment. The readings are not too bad. 
Um, the problem is always the emissivity of the material um, because if you don't calibrate a, a thermal camera the readings will be will be bad in the end as well uh, yeah we are we have already done quite a bit of our 150% scale Marvin let me try to give you a closer look of it. So the surfaces do look really smooth. You'll see. Uh, Blanksy is saying could be the light reflection. Yeah, could be as well because I have some really big lights right here on the front. Cool. Um, yeah, let's see if at at some point, yeah, let's let's do it another cup uh, or let's just let it go for another couple of minutes and then we can turn up the speed and see if that changes anything uh, with the print quality. A tree is asking, is that an AnyCubic Ultra Base type bed? It's not an AnyCubic Ultra Base, but it's an AnyCubic Ultra Base type bed yes um, so you also have this ceramic coating on the surface Can you lower the camera? Uh, I can give it a try, but it's fixed on the tripod and the tri and this is basically the lowest setting of the tripod. But uh, let me figure out something. look really nice very smooth surfaces Victor is asking, how is your Voron Zero? Uh, the Voron is currently still uh, not being used anymore due to my problems that I had with, yeah, like basically the material creeping away. But I'm uh, currently doing the, uh, the creep tests and hopefully I have results soon to uh, choose a material for basically rebuilding it. Um, I need to get something that is a little higher.
uh, Funky is saying between the legs it has some issues. Um, yes, it does, but it's just because um, the model prints in like clean air. Uh, so this is not due to the, the printer not being capable of doing overhangs. It's just because uh, the model is designed that way. I thought I had a really nice tripod, but but it seems to be yeah just too high for you to see what's going on there. That's too low again. Come on. There we go. So far, so good. For, uh, for everyone who doesn't know, this is a 150% scale Marvin, keychain Marvin. So many questions about the Voron. Will I be building a Voron V2? Maybe. I need to finish my V0 at first and print my 10 minute Banshee. Uh, I do have too many Banshees. Perfectly engineered. What's perfectly engineered? The Voron or the Artillery Genius? Uh, sorry, Artillery Hornet. Too slow. Um, give me four more minutes and in four minutes we will turn the speed up to 200% and see how that changes the results in the end. NC, what about a Jubilee tool changer build? Uh, I still have my E3D tool changer and I currently do have too many printers. It's actually hard to say that, but I have too many printers and too many projects going on. So I need to focus on the stuff uh, that seems to be important and that also seems to be interesting for you. I think one of the really interesting videos in the near future will be the material creep video. Thank you, Art. Keep up the great work. Grüße aus Karlsruhe. Yeah, also a bit more southern, uh, Baden-Württemberg. Is it better than the Voxel Lab Aquilla? I have no clue what that is, but I did not have a clue what a Voron is like two months ago, and I'm so blown away right now. With your accent, that almost sounds like too many banshees. Uh, whatever a banshee is, I only know a, a banshee from, from GTA, <laughs> which would be way wor which would be a way worse problem. Matthias asking, do you prefer direct drive or Bowden? Uh, if I'm not looking for pure speed, I would always prefer direct drive. Um, if you want to have a fast printer, a Bowden system has the benefit that it removes the weight of the, the, the feeder from um, the print head, which is, well, results in, in less vibrations or just gives you fast accelerations. Let's put it this, let's put it this way. Hans Kanz is asking, will there be a video about the Hornet? You're just 
watching a video about the Hornet. Um, I'm not sure if I will do a full review on it. So far it l doesn't seem to be a bad printer, especially for the price. And um, I think if it performs similarly to an Ender 3, I might almost be preferring this machine just because it looks different and it has nice stock marlin and it has a nice wiring loom and things like that. Peter is asking, can you review a Mark Forge? Uh, too expensive for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I currently don't have a Mark Forge. I, I would be really interested. They, they recently released I think copper as a material for the Mark Forge printer. So um, you print copper particles with a binder and then deep binder and sintry it and have uh, yeah proper proper copper parts in the end, which would be really interesting to to print some um, filigree uh, heat sinks, for example. No one is asking, what is the best choice for inexpensive nylon printing? Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I have made really good experiences with the Hobby King materials. I don't know if they also do have nylon, but it's maybe worth, worth checking that out. Nylon is very often a real pain to print if you don't have one of the more expensive ones that are modified by additives or um, infused with carbon fibers, for example. Uh, Jerome is asking any project projection on the release date for the material creep video Probably not in the next four weeks, but I hope that in May or something those tests Take a bit of time. I have already made several tests just to figure out how to do it But it still requires some time um, Hayden is saying look towards the nylon 12 materials Us usually easier to print than nylon 6 in his opinion um, I wouldn't fully agree on that um, because nylon 12 requires a l requires to be properly melted that the layers fuse together uh, so if you have layer adhesion problems with nylon 12 maybe think about either uh, printing waste low or using a volcano hot end that's what i uh, that what that's what uh, my experience with that was in the past uh, hans is asking have you seen the mosaic pellets two or three yes i have seen them and i would really like to use one at some point uh, and the three now looks really really nice i hope maybe when they uh, when they finally release it, I might get my hands on one and maybe compare it to the tool changer because currently my E3D tool changer is the only mach machine where I can do multi-material and multi-color 3D printing. Uh, Andreas Thaler is asking, so he is wondering why the Bowden tube, uh, the integrated Bowden tube doesn't reach all the way down to the nozzle. Um, and if this is an all metal hot end. I'm not sure if this is an all metal hot end. Uh, it would be nice if this would be an all metal hot end, by, but I suspect they still have like a, a short PTFE liner similar to the E3, uh, to the Ender 3 Bowden fix. Um, you might have seen in there and I think Yes, let me show you something S 
So... Let me quickly change the focus. So in like the accessories of the printer, there is a short Bowden tube included. And I suspect that this is a spare that could potentially go into uh, the hot end. And I think this is the thing that reaches down all the way to the nozzle, but I'm, I'm not sure there. But I suspect that's what this is. So this does look pretty nice. Some digital zoom right here. Um, Time to go faster. Yeah, I think it's time to go faster. Yeah, the lighting is just not perfect. Should maybe have done that already in the past. Um. Okay. Uh, cooling 100%. I think, yeah, the part cooling fan is running 100%. Okay, uh, let's crank the speed up. Let's maybe start with 150%. So, this is 150% speed. Um, let's keep that running for two, three minutes, uh, that we can later check if the ringing marks got more. But so far, yeah, that's not, that's still not super fast. Hey Fabio, Fabio is repairing his CR10S while watching the screen, uh, stream. He has a broken bat cable. Uh, yeah, I had, had that as well. Also on, on my machine. On my machine, the connector to the electronics enclosure broke at some point. Nathan is asking, printing a Marvin, what year is it? It's 2021, but since a Benji always takes so long and a Marvin also has some, some really nice features to take a look at after the print. I thought, uh, yeah, why not, why not print that one? Uh, just half done is asking, I need to print small tires with 
a somewhat flexible rubber like material i've got a cr6 se any ideas what i could use uh, i can highly recommend the vario short tpu by by color fab because in its like initial state it's still quite rigid but if you increase uh, the printing temperature um, the material foams up and gets way more softer and daniel is saying 80 millimeters a second this sh thing should uh, be capable of doing yes we, we will do that but give me like two three more minutes just that we can later see a transition if it got worse um fpv leo is asking do you fly fpv i i used to fly fpv years ago but i haven't done it a lot the last years uh what's your favorite ptg brand i print a lot of dust filament but just because it's local and it's working uh steph is asking how much does this one cost 240 bucks usually deliv delivered from a local warehouse Alyssa is asking any new adventures with the filler extruder no but i'm uh, currently trying to get back into filament recycling or material recycling by using the mahor x y z direct extruder but i'm currently putting a new um, geared stepper driver on it um... Two hundred percent. Woodworks five hundred. Thank you for the ten euros. Hello, CNC Kitchen. I got myself a Prusa Mark III, and I recently bought some E three D nozzles. I wonder what I would need for a nozzle replacement, and how I would do that. Could you also make a video about that? I think there are. I think you could even check the Prusa Mark III manual and. Um, they should tell you how to change a nozzle but what you need is just like a, a spanner that is the size of the the heater block that it well doesn't rotate while you unscrew the nozzle and um, yeah another important thing is when changing the nozzle is um, for once you need to hot tighten it that it doesn't get loose during printing again and that you don't over tighten the nozzle because if you over tighten the nozzle um, mostly the the aluminum threads in the heater block will snap and then you need to replace the heater block um, one newton meter is recommended for that but yeah i would say a bit more than hand tie just pay attention um, and i'm quite sure that there are also on youtube a couple of videos about changing nozzles on an e3d v6 uh, we said woodworks 500 hot titan question mark hot titan means that you for once unscrew the nozzle when the hot end is hot so right around I, I would say 200 degrees celsius that it just that the the plastic that's maybe sticking a bit to the threads of the nozzle um, that uh, the plastic gets loose so you untighten it at, at 200 degrees celsius and once you have added a new nozzle you um, slightly tighten it by hand again at 200 degrees celsius or something like that but then you heat your hot end up all the way to 295 degrees celsius so as hot as it can get and um, tighten it another time at that temperature and that is what hot tightening means um... Michael is asking you said that 32-bit boards is not an advantage only true on Cartesian on Cartesian or some or same on Colossal so on a Cartesian printer, if it's well configured, a 32-bit control board is not necessary, but it's cheaper than a 8-bit board nowadays, so why not use 32 bits? Um, the calculation power of a 32-bit board with ARM uh, processors, for example, do have their advantage when you, for example, have a Delta printer or if you want to go really fast 
or if you want to directly hook a color touch screen to your machine, then 32-bit is something that is really necessary. It's just a more powerful board. Um, one second, let me turn the speed all the way up to 200% and see what that does. That looks nice. So we are now at 200% um, of the initial speed. I think um, that the, the Marvin was sliced with around 40 millimeters or 45 millimeters a second speed so we should be at 80 millimeters a second but since the accelerations are not hugely high I think the printer will not be able to reach uh, those really high speeds but it's definitely faster than before. Hey Philip, nice to have you here. I was, I was quite jealous to see your your uh, plastic shredder uh, in your latest video. <laughs> my hand cranked one or my hand, hand, hand powered one uh, is I think not as well working as yours. So I'm really looking forward to see what you, what you have in mind to do with it. Uh, people are saying that I print too hot. I print at 200 degrees Celsius and um, honestly, I would not go below that temperature even with PLA. The things that you are able to see like right here in the front, this is just printing in, in total air. So I wouldn't say that the printer is, is responsible uh, for that. It, I have never seen that looking like way better on another machine. Dominic, are you a fan of Arc Welder? I tried Arc Welder out one time. Um, so for the ones who don't know what Arc Welder is, Arc Welder is a, a plugin for Octoprint that um, takes a look at your G-code and replaces circular motions by the G2 and G G3 G-code commands um, so that um, the faceting of your model can be gone and short steps are replaced with bigger arc movements. I have tried it. Um, I haven't seen any huge advantages for my application so far. Woodworks 500. CNC Kitchen, what do you think is the best hobby printer you've ever put your hands on? I know there aren't any bests, but uh, in all angles, what do you think is the best printer? Uh, call me a shill, but I love my, my Prusa Mark III. Um, so I think you have bought a, a, very, good, a very good printer. It's my, my fire and forget machine. Um, I print most of my parts on the Prusas. I put the SD card in there, I hit start, I leave the room and I'm, I can be like 99% sure that when I come back after three hours, five hours, I have a finished part on the build platform. I don't need to watch the first layer. I don't need to worry about bed leveling and things like that. Everything just works. Uh, Antti, <laughs> thank you again for the five bucks here, five bucks towards a new shredder. Go save the planet. Yes, I really want to do more in that direction and I'm, al I'm already working on, on projects there, but I'm, I need to replace the, the underpowered stepper motor on my extruder at the moment. Vincent is saying, I think the Prusa Mini is, a great, is great as a starter. Uh, maybe I have never tried a Prusa Mini, so 
I can't say if, if it's good. I was hoping to have a Prusa mini kit arrive at my doorstep uh, from day in to day out because uh, this is like the the printer that I won at the Polymaker competition, but yeah, it's I think it's still not shipped out, but I hope that it will arrive at some point soon. Hey Jim, how are you doing? Uh, sorry that I don't have your filament on here. <laughs> Gentleman is asking, hi, do you have experience with Sinto bearings? Um, when I first purchased my Prusa Mark II almost five years ago, I um, installed Egos bearings in there. Uh, they worked okay, but I had the feeling that they wore out quite fast just because I think the axes were not perfectly aligned. And this was also the reason why I switched back to um, to uh, the normal bearings. Jerome, uh, mini kit or pre-assembled? Uh, I have the kit version uh, just because I won like a $500 printer in the Polymaker competition and the kit was $450 plus I think another $20 for the filament runout sensor so it was just below the limit and uh, the assembled machine would have already been uh, been above that value and uh, I was yeah looking forward to yeah assemble it on a stream just because um, many have seen a Prusa Mini the pre-assembled version but not a lot have done or assembled the kit on their own um, or have somebody else seen one being assembled. Morgan. <laughs> uh, Marvin is asking, do you use something like NVIDIA Broadcast or is the printer that silent? Uh, no, I there is no filtering applied to my audio. Uh, I have a lavalier mic right here at my at my neck. Uh, the printer is not totally silent, but it is not loud, and I so far really enjoy it. The only loud things on this machine are uh, the PSU fans and also the fans right here in the enclosure. Um, for the PSU, it's it's kind of a pity because replacing a PSU is can be kind of ex, uh, expensive. Replacing the fan here in the enclosure might be an option to just calm it down a little more. Mild Lemon is saying assembling the mini kit is easier than the Mark. 3S, I hope, just because I am not looking forward to do a six, seven hour stream um, assembling a printer. This, I think, would kill my brain. Hackbard, what filament do you uh, think is the hardest to print? Nylon is always a pain. Uh, if, if you would go to PEI or uh, PPS or PEAK, uh, this would be even harder, but I haven't tried that so far. Andreas Thaler, OWL filament. Yeah, I, I purchased a roll of their Beware filament like two years ago because I wanted to do a, a review on it. I didn't do that in the end, but I used it for printing face shields at the beginning of last year. And uh, surprisingly, I did not have a single jam on that uh, 10 euro spool. Um, yeah. 
Peter, uh, which bigger printer, 400 or bigger, can you suggest? Uh, I don't have a clue. I don't have uh, such a big printer on my own. Um, you can always check the Creality printers, but I have never tried one. So, yeah, um, I don't really have an opinion in that direction. Hackbard, have you tried the Dragon Hot End? No, I have not tried the Dragon Hot End, but I would like to do a Hot End comparison at one point. Martin the Engineer, what is the most expensive filament that I have ever bought? Um, so. I haven't bought that myself, but I have a three kilo roll of BASF Ultrafuse 13.8 um, pH sintering material down uh, down there, where I think the roll, the three kilogram roll, is 450 euros. Uh, so that's pretty expensive. But as I said, I, I didn't buy that on my own. How's the FL Sun Q5 going? Almost got one myself. Uh, I tried to install new firmware, but it just wasn't working out for me. Uh, but I might be getting the new FL Sun, I think, how's it called? QS5 or RS5 with uh, linear rails and things like that. Really looking forward to because I still don't, don't have like a good working uh, Delta printer to show off. Uh, if you if you do a hot end comparison, include the Nova hot end. Yeah, people talked about that on on Twitter today. Yeah, maybe. Melta Gyro, what's your fastest benchy on the Mark III S? Uh, I haven't tried to print a really fast one on the on the Prusa yet. Zeb, would you recommend hardened nozzles for wood fill filaments? Um, no, just for the reason that wood filaments tend, tended to clog my nozzles like regularly. So I either had to replace them very often or had to burn them out. And uh, burning out a hardened nozzle will basically ruin it. So, and I don't think that uh, wood filament is that abrasive as a glow in the dark or, or carbon fiber material. So, I wouldn't use a hardened, an, an expensive hardened steel nozzle for, for wood filament. Fish FL Sun SR, yeah, the super racer, <laughs> that's the one. What do you think about BQB1? Uh, don't have one, no opinion on that. What's the biggest nozzle diameter you have tried? 1.2 millimeters, uh, nothing special. MWL, so what's the twist? The twist is injection molded enclosure and nice wiring harness. Leon, what was my very first 3D printer? It was a Mendel 90 and it was the best decision I made at that point, investing in, in that machine because it is it was a really great machine. Yeah, if, you, if, if somebody of you has an FL Sun Q5, so that Delta printer, putting a different mainboard in there is not a bad choice because I think the Robin Nano that is in there is just, ah, it's, it's, it's not a good mainboard. I wasn't really happy with it. 
Alberto is asking, what material is this? This is Das Filament Multicolor Galaxy PLA. Wait, we are done. And so fast. Okay. We will take a closer look at the Marvin in a second, but you can't tell me that this is bad. Man. Sorry, I have to go to the full camera. John, thank you so much for the 100 bucks. Um, for more drinks, thanks for the content and amazing videos. Uh, thank you so much for the donation. Um, this will make my uh, San Pellegrino Clementina uh, taste even better. <laughs> mm. All right, let's take a look at the Marvin, um, but I will get just the tripod mounted again. That makes it easier to take a look at the details. So let's do a quick recap. Um, so we assembled the printer, uh, then we printed this 150% sized Marvin model using the Ender 3 profile in Prusa Slicer just because this was the easiest way to do. Um, right at the middle we increased the speed from 100% printing speed to 150 and roughly I think around here we increased it to 200% the normal printing speed. This is um, Das Filament PLA and um, this Marvin was scaled by 150% so that it takes a bit longer. Okay. So, oh, sorry, okay, so there we go, come on, um, this down here is totally normal because this is just an island that is printed in, in mid-air, that's um, a problem of the model. Otherwise, um, you can even see the faceting of, of the model right here. So I think this is not an artifact of the printer, but this is just the, the facets of the model. Um, it doesn't look as if as we have any, any Z bending. It doesn't look as if we have any, uh, any salmon skin effect. Right here at 200% we can see some small artifacts, but this is really printed at right at the edge. Uh, overhangs look really nice. Uh, I think especially because we have part cooling coming from both sides. Also here and here. Um, details were printed really nice. I can't I can barely spot any ringing artifacts, maybe just right around here. Um, also, this part right here printed at 200% speed, so there wasn't a lot of time for cooling. This came out really well. Also, those parts right here looks really beautiful. 
Um, if you say this print looks inconsistent, as I said, we increased the speed right around here. This was printed at 200% speed. This bottom part was all printed at like the normal speed setting. And this looks more than usable. It looks really nice to be honest. I can't really complain in, in any way. Cool. Um, yeah, let's put this back on the print platform just because it looks nice. So 240 bucks, uh, five minute assembly, uh, 32 bit control board, 24 volts power supply. Uh, I think 220 by 220 by a 300 millimeter print platform, um, a nice dot matrix LCD display with an encoder wheel right here on the front, full size SD card. Um, really neat and clean wiring, to be honest. Uh, so maybe you can see this a little bit better now. Uh, we only have this this one wiring harness going to the front. Um, I think this is one of the coolest things, but also one of the big downsides of this printer, because if something in here fails, I don't know if you and how you would replace something like that on your own. Uh, this is not a full review, but so far I'm really happy. Noise level is acceptable. Steppers are quiet. The only thing that is a bit noisy is the power supply. Firmware seems to be configured really well. I can complain way less than I think on, on many other printers of this price range. And I think also like the group of people it's, it's aiming towards. Um, do some more research on your own. Maybe uh, people have been printing with this machine for a long amount of time. Maybe things are failing, but so far uh, I would not say um, stay away from that printer, I guess. I have maybe forgotten a couple of questions. Um, so yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, this will, video will be like uh, be available after the stream as well. Put your questions in there and I guess that's basically it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm really hoping to do that more often in the future just because now I have a an office and I hope to get some more furniture behind me because that currently still looks horrible. Have um a great weekend happy easter and i guess i will see you soon thank you very much and also thank you very much for the donations and super chats goodbye <laughs>